guys, welcome to another Homebrew Wednesday. Um, I'm in the kitchen this week. Going to be doing some racking, taking you through some of the stuff that I've got on the go. What's going to be coming up soon? Um, uh, right, I've just um, got a barrel over there sterilising in case I've run out of buckets because I've used them all. Uh, could do with buying a few more. Um, just one second. Okay, right, what I've got going on is in here I've got the. Um, I revisited the uh, the black sheep clone that I made and I decided then to change it all out. It's not actually a clone anymore, it's sort of more of a, an adaptation. Um, I've taken the base recipe that I had and changed it. Um, one of the big changes I made was. Dry hop. If I take you a bit closer here, just hang on. Okay, as you can see, it's, uh, it's been dry hopping now for six days and it's been dry hopped with 60 grams of, of tet. Um, whole leaf hops, all up there. And um, we're going to rack this off today. Um, there's some more beers there, but we'll get into that in just a moment. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to just take, pop the top off that. We're going to transfer it into the barrel. Just the, uh, the other side from here. It's sterilised. So when that goes, it smells good. Um, hops really smell nice. Um, so so yeah. Um, last time I made that, I made it really really dark. I put like 500 grams of uh, the black malt in, which I changed that. It was supposed to be 50 grams. Um, how I've screwed that up, I'll never know. But I put. In this one, I didn't put the black malt in at all. I did the um, roasted barley instead. It was um, um, husk, huskless barley. Um, the husk roast barley. Um, and I put 50 grams of that in. I had that because I was making the, um, the stout. Um, which I'll talk about in just a second. Um, it's about here. Okay, so that's racked off into the into the keg now. I just want to make a quick um, uh, hydrometer reading. Now, the OG was ten sixty. Um, I've gone for a, a stronger. <coughs> Much stronger beer this time, and we finished out at uh, ten oh eight. Oh, that's it. Right, what I've put in this, I'll work out what the ABV is in just a second. What I put in this was uh, Marisata, Crystal, some wheat malt and roasted barley. Like I said, I only put a small amount of roasted barley, um, 50 grams. Yeah, so I just took that out. You can see it's not as dark as the last one. You know, it's a beautiful um, gold colour, more of the colour I should have gone for. Uh, the last time I made this, um, mm, lovely hop aroma. Um, so yeah, and the hops um, in the boil, I use Challenger and Fuggles and Goldings, East Kent Goldings, um, and I dry hopped with uh, Tetna, and uh, that was. Um, And that was that. So 
the black sheep clone is no longer black sheep clone it is now a beer of its own distinction um, whether it's a nice beer time will tell okay so let's find out the uh, ABV and get on the old laptop and find out what that is okay so working that out is worked out at 6.8 percent ouch that's big um, and I was going for a high gravity beer that was intentional um, so the ABV is strong because I wanted it to be strong and put it back in there at least I've got that Hopefully this uh, tastes. I should have tasted some. Hang on. Get a little. Um, I'm gonna use a wine glass for tasting. So, like I said, it's. Uh, Golden colour, yeah. It's got a good aroma. Oh wow! Wow, that was really nice. Really like that. Um, I'm not going to describe it. I'm not going to put that back in there actually. That's silly. Don't do that, beard. It's um, mild on the bitterness. Um, lots of aroma, lots of character, and it's um. You know, it's got a good body. Um, of course, it's not clear because I've only just passed it through. It's had all that dry hopping, and, um, and that's it. So once that's cleared out, I had a bit of age on it. I reckon that's going to fabulous bit, mm. which is good because you know, I want to make it one of my more staple beers. I did actually come up with a label for that one already, um, which I'll show you now, if I can. So, let's see, can we make that out? There we are. It's going to be the label. It's the Woolly Mammoth. Uh, I've obviously got to change the ABV because I did just guess. I wasn't far off, fair play. Okay, so that's that, and I'm just going to clear this out, give this a quick wash, and then I'll come right back, and we'll go through um, the stout. Okay, time to move on, <clears throat> and we're going on to the stout, which is a Guinness clone recipe, which I got from a gentleman named Rye Clark, Ree Clark, something like that. Got the recipe of... Um, homebrewtalk.com I, I don't know if anybody of you used that but I read through the comments of it and it seemed to be a great great recipe so I've given that a go um, and the recipe like I say it's on on brewtalk.com homebrew, homebrewtalk.com sorry and it's uh, a Guinness clone a Guinness draft clone and it um, over here can look at you while I'm talking. Yeah, it's um, uh, Marisotta, flaked barley, roasted barley, which is uh, what I just used on the um, the mammoth. Yeah, um, only one hop addition, which was two ounces of East Kent Goldings, and the yeast used was Nottingham. Okay, 
Uh, if you want to go and look at that recipe, uh, I've put a link to the website in the uh, more info section and also a link straight to the uh, the club that I've just made. Um, volumes wise, it's um, it's an American recipe, which is a five gallon, five point five gallon batch, which I think is just about twenty twenty liters, something like that. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but that's what I've got. Um, my OG came out at 150, it should have been uh, 10.53 um, and it's final gravity on the recipe is 10.13, mine's come to <coughs> excuse me, 10.14 I think, um, it's yeah 10.14 um, it's somewhere about 4.5%, 4 something like that, which is okay. Um, it's not what the, uh, you know, the recipe had, but, you know, bottle of Guinness. And that's the original Guinness. And you see, right there, 4.2%. So it's more than what the genuine stuff is, but that's okay. Um, but I didn't want it too strong, like I said, I've got the big beer, which is here, and then you know, the, uh, the stout, which is mainly for Christmas drinking. Um, but we're going to rack that off right now. Cleaned out the carboy, sterilised, and we're going to do the here it goes. And there we go. So it's a lovely, it's good, dark black colour. It's going to sit in secondary now for 10 days. Um, no dry hopping, it's a stout, a uh, dry stout at that. And it's not, not the style. Um, I, as a first batch, I'm going to let it as is, see what it comes out like. Um, might tweak it a little bit later on, or I might just leave it as it is. Um, and I have got a label for that too. I'm hoping it's going to be a nice one. So I did the label. It's still, it's not finished yet. It's still work, work in progress. Um, there we go. It's the Welsh Dragon, uh, the Black Dragon, sorry. Um, Welsh Stout. Uh, being in Wales and all that. Uh, and that's the Guinness. Now, the other two beers I've got going on back there, they're both. Um, uh, Cerveza. Uh, there's, um, I've got the big, big barrel. I've showed you before the keg um, for the lager tap in the in the bar. Well, that's nearly done. So I need something to replenish that with, which is the uh, the two. Um, hang on a second. Let's show you two. Bubbling away. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that one. Come on. There we go. And they're bubbling away nicely. And then finally, while I've got this out, underneath here is the um the side. Remember I said I got those apples last week? Let's take this off. And the kids' t shirts just fit over these just perfectly. There we go, there's the cider. Let me see some little floaties going on in there. I don't know if that's still going. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, that's it. That's all I've got going on with the game, and that's all I've got. Um, 
so that's all sorted. Might just uh, sprint this out and get a quick taste of that spout to see what it's like. There we go. As you can see, it's dark. That's um. Still this time to clear. It's very murky. Mm, very roasty. It's, uh, it's dark. The roasted malts you can smell. No discernible hop aroma, which I believe is not supposed to be there anyway. So, cheers. Oh, yeah. really good. Tastes really uh, really nice. Um, there's a bitterness right across the middle of the tongue. Mouthfeel is amazing. Um, got a great multi character. And although there's um Let's have a look. The roasted barley, I can taste it um, quite a bit. And ooh, there's a pound, a pound of roasted barley, um, eight pound of malt, um, marisotta, pale malt, and three pound of flaked barley. Um, Mm. Okay, as it's Halloween coming up and pumpkin ale, I'm going to make a pumpkin ale because, as everybody knows in the UK this time of year, possibly all over the world, Halloween means supermarkets full of pumpkins. Um, my kids love doing pumpkin carvings. Um, I have a go as well, which means we've normally got about anywhere up to about 10 pumpkins that we just scoop all the innards out and generally throw away. Um, I make a couple of pumpkin pies and then the rest just sort of goes in the bin. Um, it's really good, this. Um, and this year I've decided to make a pumpkin ale, but before I make it, I bought this. It's a Witchwood Brewery. Evil Pumpkin Beer. It's a pumpkin ale. Um, there's probably more on the market, but this is the one I found first. So I'm going to give it a try to see if I actually do like a pumpkin ale. It's not about making it, but I'm not going to drink it. So, so that coming up. I've got... Um, I thought I'd give a wine kit a go, but I've not done a wine kit. I've done plenty of wines. Um, but they say you know, they're drinkable in a few weeks. So I thought, I've got plenty of white wine that I've made over the, over the summer. You know, I've got the, uh, the dandelion wine, the tea wines. I've got so, there's some like, fruit tea wines and um, the rice wine. So not all that. So I thought, I'm going to do a kit wine. But I'm going to do a red because I've got plenty of whites and I suppose you could call them rosés. So they're not exactly full-bodied reds. So get a, get a red wine done for Christmas. And I'm going to do a few other odds and sods. Uh, I'm going to be building like Christmas hampers. Um, I'm going to show you what I do. Uh, I don't have to do it, but I think it's a nice idea. Um, I did it last year. Um... Well, last year I just sort of gave away, you know, bottles of wine and 
bottles of beer and stuff like that. But this year, I'm going to be making like a chutney. Um, I'm going to be making like a pate. Uh, uh, applesauce. Stuff like that, you know, like you're, you're going to use them for Christmas. So I'm going to put like a little small hamper of like chutneys and sauces and a pate, maybe, uh, I don't know, cheesecake, something like that. Something like that I can just sort of like um, knock up together a week before Christmas, a um, couple of bottles of wine, a few bottles of beer, you know, in a box, um, and just give it to family members, you know. Um, I just think it has a nice touch, you know, as adults, you know, presents become something of, you know, what you get year after year after year, what you buy people, what you get them. And I think with this, it gives it a little bit more of that personal touch. So, I'll make videos on how I'm doing that because, you know, when I make chutneys, um, mince pies is another one, you know, from scratch. Um, not with the jarred mince meat, I make my own mince meat, I'll show you how I do that. You know, and it's all going to involve uh, various forms of homebrew. You know, um, whether it be wines, beers, spirits. You know, it's all going to be incorporated into what I'm making. So keeps it within sort of like the homebrew situation. Um, and of course, it's going to be Christmas. I love Christmas. Um, and that's it guys, um, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head, um, Uncle Jonah's one kit challenge is done, um, I don't know if anybody else has done it, I'm sure they have, I can't be the only one that's thought of it, but, um, this is the one kit challenge beer, it's, um, it's a bitter, I've got a video to put up, I just haven't got around to editing it, it edit, editing it yet I'll maybe I'll learn to speak properly it'll really help um, but this is it yeah and I put it in pop bottles you know um, this was a Sprite I think it was I can't really remember uh, you know and these ones are uh, uh, Fanta bottles I thought you know uh, people drink these on a daily basis I just pick up the bottles um, you know, at work or wash them, sterilise them. It's free bottles. And I, I'm only using it. I generally put my beer in glass bottles because I prefer glass. Um, but you know, that's pretty solid, it's carbonated. It's a good way of testing. But for postage, ideal. Because I've had um, a few incidents where I've sent beer out and they've just got totally smashed. And I've had to send them out again, which is, it just pissed me off. And I think plastic bottles are the way to go, but they were expensive to buy. And these are just collect a few here and there, you know. Kids have a bottle of pop, or I'll have a bottle of pop and stuff like that. And over time, they just build them. I've got about 30 or 40 of them now. Uh, and I'm only going to bottle a few beers at a time in the plastic that I'm going to be sending out. Um, but, you know, it's free. Free bottles. And I like free. Well, that's it guys that's it for this week um, on the home brew front um, now all I've got left to do is the competition uh, that I put up for the uh, the four beers and the, um, the hops um, now I have um, there was no need to do a draw, there was two clear cut winners, um, which I'll, <sighs> computers on bloody glow, go glow, so I need to learn to fucking talk, the computers on go slow today, i just got to get up the emails, there we go, and like I said there was two clear cut winners, um, overall winner, got all 10 right um, <clears throat> and that person is uh, Chris Froggett so Chris Froggett congratulations mate you get the first lot of beers and the 100 grams of hops um, now I did say 
um, buggles, I'm sure. But, you know, going through all my stuff. Now, that's the, um, the 100 grams of fuggles. Now, if you don't want those, I also have some <coughs> uh, Bobek or symbols. Cascade. So you got a choice. You can have one of those. So you can have the, the Cascade, the Bobek, or the Fuggles. They're all sealed, uh, back packed, and they're all 100 grams. So just uh, PM me with your address and which hops you want, and I'll get them up to you. Okay, and And the second one goes to and the second one goes to um where does it come? Sedgy One Brew. Okay, Sedgy One Brew, well done. You get the four beers, second prize. Um, thanks for everybody that entered. Um, uh, for, the, for those that you that are interested, I'm going to put the um, uh, the list of answers. There we go. But it came out eventually. The list of the answers to the ten questions that were that were asked. Well, not asked. There were. There were pictures, um, and you had to decipher a word. Um, I'll put the uh, the answers in the end credits uh, with a very, very, very special little sing out. Okay, until next week, guys. Cheers and enjoy. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are.